Instrument flying in a multi-engine aircraft is basically the same as in a single-engine airplane. The main differences relate to the potential for an engine failure, the higher operating speeds, and the more complex systems installed in these aircraft. If your instrument rated when you apply for your multi-engine rating, you must demonstrate instrument proficiency during the practical test or have your multi-engine privileges limited to VFR flight. During the instrument portion of the flight test, you'll demonstrate the procedures for an engine failure in straight and level flight and turns. You'll also make an instrument approach with both engines running and an approach with one engine inoperative. Let's begin with a look at how to recognize an engine failure by instrument reference. The attitude indicator and heading indicator show a roll and yaw toward the failed engine while the ball in the turn and bank indicator deflects toward the operating engine. Once you've recognized an engine failure, set the engine controls for maximum power, reduce drag, identify and verify the failed engine, and feather the propeller. The distraction of securing a failed engine and the unequal in-flight forces makes it imperative that you cross-check the flight instruments to maintain aircraft control. Once you're stabilized in the engine out configuration, use trim to help you maintain the precision required in instrument flight. Hold five degrees of bank toward the good engine to improve your heading control and straight and level flight. And remember that the ball will be slightly off center toward the operating engine. When making turns, use a standard rate turn for best performance. The next maneuver we'll discuss, an instrument approach with both engines operating, is flown with the same established procedures you've used in single engine aircraft. You already know that an instrument approach requires several tasks to be performed in a relatively short time. The higher approach speed and more detailed checklist procedures of a light twin increase your workload. Good cockpit management and anticipating situations to stay ahead of the airplane makes multi-engine approaches much easier. In some cases, the higher approach speed may put you in a different approach category than you've used in a single engine airplane. If you're in a situation where you have to fly an instrument approach with an engine inoperative, do everything you can to ensure that your first attempt will be successful so a missed approach will not be necessary. If at all possible, fly the approach to an airport that has weather well above the approach minimums. Fly a precision approach if one is available, since it gives you a constant rate of descent down to the runway. A non-precision approach may require you to maintain level flight at low altitude with a high power setting on the good engine. If radar service is available, request vectors as soon as possible. This reduces your workload and usually results in less maneuvering during the approach. Don't hesitate to advise the controller of your emergency situation so you can get traffic priority. When flying the actual approach, use normal procedures as much as possible. Deviating from a familiar routine can cause confusion and lead to an item being skipped. When you're established inbound on the final approach course, slow down to approach speed or VYSE, whichever is higher. Maintain this throughout the approach until landing is assured. If sufficient power is available, lower the landing gear at the final approach fix to begin a stabilized descent down the glide path. If power is not available, lower the gear when you're sure you can make the runway. Flap extension is the major deviation from normal procedures. Use the minimum flap setting recommended by the manufacturer until you're certain of making the runway. Once you have the runway in sight, plan the final segment of the approach for a gradual power reduction so you can touch down with the good engine at or near idle. Remember that this and all other procedures in this presentation are general in nature. Always refer to your pilot's operating handbook for the actions to follow for each situation. Learning to fly a twin is an exciting and challenging experience. A multi-engine rating gives you greater versatility and adds a sense of professional accomplishment to your flying career. 
it's important to remember that each twin has its own operating limitations and flight characteristics. A thorough understanding of your airplane adds to the overall safety of each flight.